Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're going deep on something called Byte Beat. Hmm. Ever heard of music created directly from computer code? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild stuff. Get ready because that's exactly what we're diving into today. We've got some fascinating excerpts here and I can't wait to unpack this with you. Yeah, it's really interesting stuff. I have to admit, Byte Beat always makes me smile a little. Right. It's such a simple concept on the surface, but the creative possibilities are, are really kind of mind-boggling. Yeah, the article calls it elegant, and I'm already getting a sense of that just from skimming the intro. Uh huh. So for our listeners who might be hearing about this for the first time, sure. what exactly IS Byte Beat? Well, paint us a picture. Okay, so imagine this. You write a teeny tiny computer program, okay. often, like just one line of code. And instead of making your computer, you know, do spreadsheets or whatever, it spits out sound. Wow. That's Byte Beat in a nutshell. Okay, let me make sure I'm following. We're not talking about using code to control some fancy music software, right? Oh. No. This is something much more fundamental. Exactly. This is about as raw as digital audio gets. See, deep down, digital sound is just a long sequence of numbers. Right. Each one representing a tiny moment in a sound wave. Byte Beat manipulates those numbers directly. Oh, wow. Using very simple math. So it's like somebody figured out a way to speak directly to the heart of a computer sound system, but only using the language of math. Precisely. And it all started with this Finnish programmer and artist, um, Vil Matthias Heikeli, better known as Viznut. Back in 2011, he kind of pioneered this whole thing. Wow, okay. But how does that actually work? I'm picturing lines of code like musical notes on a staff, but that can't be right, can it? It's actually much more direct than that. Imagine a recipe, but instead of ingredients, it's math operations. And instead of a cake, the output is sound. Mm -hmm. You feed in time as your main ingredient, and it runs through the code's mathematical instructions, and boom, you get a stream of numbers that your computer translates into audio. Whoa, in yeah. real time. All right, I'm going to need an example because my brain is starting to bend a little here. Sure. What kind of code are we talking about? Like, how much of it do you need to make, say, a simple melody? Well, how about this? The article specifically mentions a classic melody generated with just eight characters of code. Eight characters? Shorter than the word bite beat itself. Seriously? <laughs> You're telling me that something that sounds like a musical phrase to our ears can come from something more concise than most text messages? Yeah. That's wild. What's even more mind-blowing is that we're not talking about pre-recorded sounds being triggered. It's like that tiny bit of code is doing live uh musical math in real time exactly it's pure unadulterated digital synthesis happening right then and there and because it's so direct the sonic possibilities are practically endless this is incredible but before we get ahead of ourselves i think we need to break down how this musical math actually works give us a behind the scenes look at what's going on with these numbers and equations okay so imagine digital audio as a long constantly updating list of numbers okay each number represents the height of a sound wave at a specific moment in time. So like a snapshot of a wave frozen in time. Yep. And a string of these snapshots creates the illusion of a continuous sound wave, like as it's moving. You got it. Now, Bybee programs are basically just mathematical equations that tell your computer how to manipulate those numbers. Okay. Let's say you have a simple byte beat program like T440. Hold on. Back up a sec. You're showing me actual code. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So T440, what's going on there? In this case, T represents time, right? which is constantly increasing as the program runs. We're multiplying time by 440, which happens to be the frequency of the musical note A. Ah, okay. So as time marches forward, that little snippet of code is constantly spitting out numbers that correspond to the sound wave of an A note. Precisely. Now, this is a very basic example, but you can make things infinitely more complex just by changing the equation. Sure. Add some sine waves, throw in some modulo operations for those uh, glitchy effects. The possibilities are vast. So it's kind of like those um, old school sound synthesizers with all the knobs and dials. Yeah, yeah. But instead of knobs, you're tweaking the math directly. Exactly. But with code as your instrument, you have a level of control and precision that those old analog synths could only dream of. And that brings us to why this is so cool. It's not just about making weird beeps and bloops, although it can do that too, of course. Right, yeah. Yeah. No, this is about pushing the boundaries of how we think about music. Right, yeah. It's like discovering a whole new continent of sonic possibilities. Exactly. With Byte Beat, your instrument isn't bound by physical limitations like a piano or a guitar. You're only limited by your imagination and your ability to 
uh, wrangle some code. And the fact that you can create something so sonically rich from something as seemingly basic as a few lines of code. Yeah. It's just, it's mind blowing. It really makes you appreciate the elegance of it all, you know? Yeah. This incredible depth and complexity hidden within such a simple framework. Right. And here's the thing. It's not just about music. Remember that IBNIZ thing we mentioned earlier? Oh, right. The visual art platform. We can't just breeze past that. <laughs> yeah. So we've got code making music. Yeah. Yeah. What does it deal with IBNIZ? Is it code making art now? You could say that. IBNIZ takes these same principles of byte beat, this idea of manipulating numbers with simple code, and applies it to visuals instead of audio. Hold on. So instead of numbers representing sound waves, they're representing pixels on a screen. You got it. So instead of generating a melody, you might generate a stunning fractal or an ever-evolving abstract image. Okay, now that's just showing off. <laughs> but seriously, it makes you wonder what other creative possibilities are hiding within the tools and technology we use every day. It's a good reminder that sometimes the most exciting discoveries are found not in some shiny new technology, but in the unexpected applications of things we already have. Right. But... Getting back to ByteBeat for a second, Yeah. one of the things that's particularly fascinating about it is its accessibility. Right. You don't need a fancy recording studio or expensive yeah. music software to get started. Nope. If you have a device that can run code, you could potentially make ByteBeat music. Exactly. Remember, Viznut himself drew inspiration from code written for the VIC-20, a home computer from the early 80s. That's amazing. Something that sounds so futuristic has roots in technology that's older than I am. I love that. It speaks to the enduring power of these fundamental ideas and the fact that creativity can blossom in the most unexpected places. But for me, one of the most rewarding aspects of ByteBeat is the sense of exploration and discovery it offers. Right. It's like you're charting unknown territory. Yeah. Searching for those hidden sonic gems buried within lines of code. But it's not just about finding those gems, is it? It's about understanding how they work why they sound the way they do. Absolutely. It's that pursuit of understanding that can be incredibly rewarding. Every ByteBeat program is like a little puzzle box. Yeah. Figuring out how to unlock its secrets. How those mathematical operations translate into a particular sound, that's where the real magic happens. And for our listener, why should they care about any of this? Yeah. I mean, aside from the fact that it's undeniably cool, what's the takeaway here? Yeah. What's it? So what? I think, well, for me at least, it's a powerful reminder that there's still so much left to discover. Yeah. Even in the seemingly familiar realm of computers and technology. I completely agree. We often think of technology as this, you know, defined, rigid thing. Right. But ByteBeat shows us that even at its most basic level, there's room for incredible flexibility and creativity. It makes you wonder what other hidden potentials are lurking within the tools and systems we use every day. It's like we've been handed the keys to a secret laboratory. Yeah. Where we can experiment with the very building blocks of sound and visuals. And what's exciting is that this laboratory is open to anyone with a little curiosity and a willingness to learn. You don't need a degree in computer science or a fancy studio to explore the world of ByteBeat. It's the ultimate democratization of artistic expression in a way. And it challenges us to reconsider our assumptions about where creativity can come from. It's not just about paintbrushes and pianos anymore. Exactly. It's about using the tools of our time to explore new sonic landscapes to challenge the boundaries of artistic expression. So what started as a deep dive into this, this niche thing called Bite Beat has turned into this expansive exploration of art and technology. Yeah. And uh, the surprising beauty hidden within the language of computers. It's pretty great. It's been eye-opening, to say the least. It really makes you appreciate the power of human ingenuity, doesn't it? Yeah. To take something as seemingly mundane as computer code and unlock these incredible artistic possibilities. It's, yeah. it's really quite remarkable. It is. And for our listeners, if this has sparked your curiosity even a little bit, yeah. I really encourage you to go check out some bite beat music online. There's a whole universe of sound out there waiting to be explored. Who knows? You might even be inspired to create some yourself. And remember, the journey of discovery is just as rewarding as the destination. Enjoy getting lost in the sonic world of ByteBeat. You never know what amazing things you might find.